decisions will decide my wealth. You see, I never had a silver spoon in my mouth. You know, I watched my parents struggle. I watched them get eye under their last 20, 40, $100 every single week. But there's ways to create freedom in your life because that's why we work so hard to be able to create that freedom. My first day, there was something called a caddy orientation. And I remember before I even started caddying, I had made the decision to be the absolute best caddy at that entire golf course. You know, when I was a golf caddy, I used to have to carry two golf bags around for five hours to earn $60. And I'd come back, I'd put my name on the list, and I'd carry two more golf bags. And on a Saturday or Sunday for a 14, 15 year old kid, 100 to 120 dollars i was like wow i'm rich and then i got into door-to-door -door sales at 18 years old and i had an aha moment at that time wow that would have taken me 15 16 17 hours of carrying a golf bag to produce the income that i just earned in that hour and i turned around i wrote down my presentation word for word every little part and piece of the presentation and I said, you know what, losing is not an option. I walked into this movie theater with hundreds of new recruits, hundreds of experienced reps, and I said, I'm going to beat everybody in this room. I had an absolute certainty. And that wasn't the deficit for me, that was the gift. All right, a lot of people ask me this specific question. Should I get into sales? Well, the answer is no. You should not get into sales unless you have that willingness to actually pay the price. You see, next to the word success is the word sacrifice. The most successful people are willing to do things that unsuccessful people are not willing to do. My name is Taylor McCarthy, and over the course of the last 17 years, I've been a professional trick-or-treater. Knock, knock, yeah, that's me. You see, I never looked at it as work. I never looked at it like a job. But the reason why I said most people shouldn't get into selling is because most people do not have that willingness to actually pay the price. You see, I remember being a 14 year old kid worrying about money and I heard on the radio, decisions will decide my wealth. You see, I never had a silver spoon in my mouth. Starting from the bottom was never a deficit, that was the gift for me. You know, I watched my parents struggle. I watched them get eye under their last 20, 40, $100 every single week. And for you guys that might be watching this video that are living week to week, that are in that rat race, I'm gonna tell you there's ways to escape it. There's ways to create freedom in your life because that's why we work so hard to be able to create that freedom. When I was 14, 15 years old, I wanna tell you a little bit about my origin story on really how I've gotten to the point that I am today. You know, managing a huge team on the entire East Coast for Elon Musk. Being able to climb the ranks as the top person in an industry selling alarm systems. And how I was able to go from a Jerry Rice to a Jerry Jones. So I remember when I first got into golf caddying at 14, 15 years old, one of the most prestigious golf courses in Massachusetts. My first day, there was something called a caddy orientation. And I remember before I even started caddying, I had made the decision to be the absolute best caddy at that entire golf course. You see, I made the decision before I even started. It's something called absolute certainty. It's knowing the mission, it's having a vision, it's visualizing what you wanted to do and then verbalizing it out loud. You know, when I was a golf caddy, I used to have to carry two golf bags around for five hours to earn $60. And I'd come back, I'd put my name on the list and I'd carry two more golf bags. And on a Saturday or Sunday for a 14, 15 year old kid, 100 to 120 dollars i was like wow i'm rich i'm like the highest paid freshman in my high school and then i got into door-to-door -door sales at 18 years old a lot of people don't do door-to-door -door sales and a lot of people don't do sales in general because the rejection 99 percent of people can't handle the rejection that we face on a day-to-day -day basis that's why 99 percent of people don't do sales in general a lot of people have comfort in their job they have a nine to five they don't have many challenges for me that rejection turned me on. My first day in door-to-door -door sales, I did three transactions that were worth $86 a piece. And I had an aha moment at that time. Wow, that would have taken me 15, 16, 17 hours of carrying a golf bag to produce the income that I just earned in that hour. You see, as a sales professional, it's so important that you gain something called a skill set. But next to the word success is sacrifice. There's so much sacrifice that you have to endure to become the professional. There's so many different things that will happen throughout that journey where you'll, you'll be trying to hit push off of the direction that you're trying to go. Your life is like a stock in a sense. When I was 18 years old, after you know learning this skill set, 
of being a professional trick-or-treater and realizing that I could create an income to support myself and my family for the rest of my life, I then wanted to pursue my passion, which was professional snowboarding. I snowboarded year-round. I lived in Vermont in the winters and I lived in Argentina in the summers. My second year of snowboarding, pretty much the full year, I was in a big competition and I came off of a jump and I absolutely lost it, right? It's called a scorpion. It's when the front of your board hits and it face planted, broke my collarbone, had no health insurance. And I realized I didn't want to have arthritis when I was 30 or 40 or have health conditions. My brother had came back from a summer and selling alarm systems in Cleveland, Ohio, and he had a BMW M3 in the driveway. Like I said, I didn't come from much. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth. I saw an $80,000, $90,000 car in our driveway. I'm like, man, who did you sell drugs to this summer? He's like, nah, man, I sold alarm systems in Cleveland, Ohio. And he started to recruit all my friends. All my friends were getting involved. They're moving to Tampa, Florida. And that pain of loss forced me to actually go down there. I want to talk to you guys about some of my success defining moments throughout this journey. You know, when I got into the alarm systems at 21 years old, actually my first two weeks, I almost quit. I went out there and I didn't really have the result that I wanted. And I didn't believe in the product. I didn't have that level of conviction that I needed. You know, a salesman is first off a man or a woman that can sell himself to himself or herself to herself. They have a catching belief about their product, their service, their company, their offer to be able to gain that transaction and find the excuse for these families to say yes and get involved with that process. I remember I said, hey, I'm gonna go back and sell TV, phone, and internet. That's what I did when I was 18 years old, you know, transitioning from TV, phone, and internet to alarm. And I remember I packed my bags, I started to drive home, I was about an hour into the drive and I pulled over at a rest area and I was like, wait a second, I haven't even gotten my shirt and badge. And I turned around, I wrote down my presentation word for word, every little part and piece of the presentation. And I said, you know what, losing is not an option. I walked into this movie theater with hundreds of new recruits, hundreds of experienced reps, and I said, I'm going to beat everybody in this room. I had an absolute certainty. But it wasn't about why I was doing it, it was more so about who I was doing it for. You know, like I mentioned a little bit about my upbringing, I've got a younger sister, her name is Emily, she's in the Air Force, you know, super appreciative of her service. She always tells me how proud she is of me, I'm proud of her, right? She's over there serving my country. And my dad, right? My dad has always been my who. Who am I doing this for? I'm doing this because I wanted to make my family proud. You guys each have to find your tribe. And your tribe is really those people that are gonna be there for you for the long run. Trust, loyalty, longevity, three of the most important parts in any sort of business relationship for me. So I made it that decision before I even started that there was gonna be a year-end party and there was gonna be all these awards and it would lead up to that last award, which was gonna be the salesman of the year. And I thought about that. I'm not gonna allow somebody else to take that moment from me. It wasn't about the money. You see, there's certain things that will motivate you and there's certain things that will demotivate you. And if you're constantly focused on the things that demotivate you, you're gonna be almost crippled. So I'm constantly focusing on the things I did right. I'm constantly focused on who I'm doing this for. I'm constantly focused on the things that I would need to do to be able to make the plays and make my dad proud. And I think that was like the beginning part of the journey of my 17 year career in sales. When I actually affirmed what I was going to do, I understood affirmation without discipline was delusion. And I decided to make that decision that day and I was a salesman of the year at a company called Platinum Protection, competing against thousands of sales professionals all over the United States. And that moment having my dad there at the end of the year to watch his son be called up on stage, just a kid from Massachusetts. I started from the bottom. That wasn't the deficit for me, that was the gift. I had grit, get ready, it's tough. I had desire, which allowed me to go have the discipline, to demonstrate, to document, to duplicate, and to disappear to move to that next level. After three years in the alarm industry, I realized that I had climbed that mountain being the salesman of the year back to back to back. That time I got a phone call from Elon Musk's cousins, Lyndon and Peter Rive, and they called me and they said, hey Taylor, we'd like for you to fly up to San Francisco and we'd like to meet you. And I got on that plane and I met Elon's cousins and I had a vision. You see, I was traveling three, four months at a time, living suitcase, apartment, hotels, traveling. And I said, you know what? I wanna build something bigger than myself. And at that moment, I decided to move back to Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. And I said, I wanna build something bigger than myself. We started with four individuals at this company called Solar City, and we were able to build the sales team to over 1,500 individuals up and down the East Coast that worked for 100% commission. You know, risk is the down payment for success. Sometimes you need to commit now and figure it out later. If you build it, they will come. 
and I focused on my technique, my attitude, my behavior, my input, my activity, my effort. And over the course of a four year period, I was able to build the East Coast for Solar City with direct sales professionals. So then we get a phone call that's like, hey, Solar City is being acquired by Tesla. And we're all like, yes, it's gonna be the best thing ever. And we got another phone call that said, hey, if you wanna continue working for this company, you gotta work out of a Home Depot. It's like, man, I'm not gonna be able to tell people where the hammers are in aisle six and ask them you know, about their roof. You know, I'm a hunter. I wanna go out and produce my own income. I wanna be able to go out there and make the plays. You know, at that point, I went to another solar company and then got into roofing where I realized that roofing and solar would be very innovative and creative to be able to offer both products. And what I realized along this moment is I was always something called an intrapreneur. I was always building up somebody else's dream. I was always the poster boy for these companies. And in 2020, I realized, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to go from the Jerry Rice to a Jerry Jones. I'm climbing these mountains. I'm summoning these mountains to be the top sales professional, the top trainer, being able to help different people in different industries. And that's why I do what I do, is impact. I realize how hard door-to-door -door sales is. I've been doing this for 17 years. I understand how hard sales are. And if I could give you that aha moment or that light bulb that goes on in your mind to help you think differently, that's the gift that God gave me. My business is the gift to the world. And if I don't share it with you guys, I'm being selfish. So I got into that, started Knockstar University to sell salesmen on selling, to be able to give you entertainment mixed with education. We like to call it edutainment. And throughout this journey, I had something called success defining moments. At 24 years old, I got a phone call from an individual named Grant Cardone. And he said, hey, I heard you're a big 10Xer. I'd like for you to come down to Miami and be on my show called Power Players. I'm sitting there in disbelief. Wow, is this really happening to me? You see, sometimes you go years and years and years and years and years of sacrifice where people might not notice how hard you're working. You might not be recognized for those moments or those accomplishments that you accomplish. But what you have to understand is you have to keep on keeping on. You have to keep on keeping on. There's so many people that are suffering from self-doubt while others are intimidated by your full potential. We're in the people business. We have to work harder on ourselves than we do at what we do. And I had this success-defining moment a year later where I had got a phone call from an individual named Tom Hopkins. I always say there's three individuals that you need to find. You need to find somebody that you'd like to emulate, one person that you're competing with, and one person that you're mentoring. And if you can identify those three individuals, it's gonna allow for clarity within the roadmap on the direction that you're going. Clarity creates conviction, the conviction creates the repetition, the repetition creates the belief, the belief creates the energy, the energy creates the service, the service creates your life's work, your life's work creates the freedom, and that's what you guys are all working towards. I met Tom Hopkins, he told me to fly to his home in Arizona, present at a seminar, I'm 26, 27 years old at this time. I'm like, wow, my mentor, this is the individual. I used to go to bed with sales audio every single day because this was my sport, this was my hobby, this was the game that I play. You see, I've never worked a day in my life. A lot of people talk about work ethic. Well, I'm just playing a game. How do you live with such imbalance? If you love to do what you do, the only way that it would be imbalanced is if you weren't doing it. I met Tom Hopkins, I presented on stage with him. He asked me to come back the next year to present on stage. Then he asked me to come back the next year to present on stage. Then he asked me to be his first licensed trainer. From being Tom's first licensed trainer to this last year where Tom told me, hey Taylor, you're taking over the entire business. You are my successor. You're the one that I'm passing the torch to. You see, these are very big shoes to fill. But what happens is you summit a mountain and then you get to see another mountain in your horizon and you say, how can I climb that one? You see, everything that has happened to me throughout my entire life is who I am today. It's because of my life experience, all the struggles, all the times where I didn't feel like knocking doors, all the times where we got down to our last $20, all the times where I realized that it was going to be me that had to put my last name on my back to make the decision to get my family ahead. Decisions decide your wealth. And if I were to tell you one thing right now to make you execute and achieve, it's you have to have an ardent desire. You have to have a burning desire. You have to have that absolute certainty on your mission. You have to tell yourself that losing is not an option. I can't want it more than you do. Your manager can't want it more than you do. Your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad, they can't want it to you to make these decisions. And I'm speaking to you guys as if you were my younger brothers, my younger sisters, because I know what it's like to be at the bottom. I know what it's like to struggle, but if you can actually make the decision right now to think differently and say, hey, these are the reasons why I'm gonna do this and 
these are the people that I'm going to do it for, you can put yourself in the driver's seat of your entire life. That's it. You guys have the opportunity of a lifetime to create whatever life that you want. Your life's blueprint or your life's roadmap. To be blunt with you, the average person spends more time planning out their two-week vacation to Hawaii than their life's blueprint. They have no clarity in the direction that they want to move. And clarity was one of the most important lessons that I learned throughout this journey or the continuous journey towards these achievements of predetermined worthwhile goals. A lot of you guys need to stop checking your Facebook and you need to start facing your checkbook. A lot of you guys are interested when you need to be committed. A lot of you guys are the warning when you need to be the example. A lot of you guys know what the kryptonite is that's holding you back from getting to the top. Write in your notes on your cell phone, what is my kryptonite? What is holding me back from getting to the top? You've got one life to live. And when you procrastinate, you ruin your future, you avoid the present, and you live in the past. So from a broke kid that used to carry golf bags, to an individual that wanted to become a professional snowboarder that broke his collarbone in a foreign country with no health insurance, to being a professional trick-or-treater, to taking over for the greatest sales trainer of all time, Tom Hopkins, to traveling to China and presenting in front of 25,000 individuals. Right, if you told me this kind of things were gonna happen to me in my life, I just wouldn't believe you. But guess what? If you commit now, you figure it out later. If you have the vision of a myopic vision, and you decide to dial in, I can't look left, I can't look right, my eyes on the prize, losing is not an option, who am I doing this for? You're gonna make some plays. So should you get into sales? No, you shouldn't, unless you're willing to pay the price. Effort, time investment, dedicated sacrifice. Next to the word success should be the word sacrifice. And if you're willing to live with temporary imbalance to be able to set yourselves up for decades and decades ahead, it's you versus you. Your greatest competitor is yourself. I wish you the most in success. I want to see you at the top. And this is my origin story. This is who I am. And I'm so thankful for you guys for tuning in to this video. Make sure that you like this video. And for all my new subscribers, make sure to comment. I want to get to know you guys. And I want to be able to make an impact. Because that's what I do. I think of the thousands of sales professionals that might have never made it because they never heard a message and they never used to think differently. A lot of salesmen are focusing on always what they do wrong. Well, from this point forward, I want you to focus on what you do right. A salesman is first off a man or a woman that can sell themselves to themselves. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.